In December of 2019, the world first learned of a new virus spreading across the city of Wuhan in China. It had no name and very few symptoms. But what we did know is that people were becoming extremely ill and that deaths were increasing. Within a month, the virus, then named COVID-19, had touched nearly every country in Asia and Europe and was beginning to spread to Canada, the Americas, and parts of Africa. Now, six months later, we're at over 9 million cases globally. The world has been transformed by this deadly pandemic. Some of us still find ourselves under some sort of stay-at-home order or lockdown measure. And more and more countries are beginning to see the overall benefit to compulsory mask wearing in public spaces. But one particular subset of people have had a particularly challenging time navigating pandemic life. Parents and guardians are experiencing an added layer of complexity as they navigate this pandemic and its overwhelming disruption to everyday life. Parents are going through the motions of a new normal, not just for themselves, but also for the children and teens that they parent. Tonight, we will hear from two couples who share in common a desire to eventually return home. One family to their home in China and one family to their home in Japan. As American expats, these two couples have in common that they navigated this pandemic while away from the comforts and familiarity of home base and all under the watchful eye of their children. Tonight, we hear their story. Hi, I'm Brittany. And I'm Casey. We live in China most of the time, but we are currently in Malaysia. Had just gotten back to our home in China at the beginning of January after being stateside to have our second child. And a few weeks after we had gotten settled in to our house in China, we had to kind of go on lockdown there because the virus started spreading rapidly. A few weeks after starting lockdown, the situation was just really unknown and they were starting to close things off. So we decided to leave and we came here to Malaysia where we found refuge. So we got here and we had a, about a 14 day self-imposed quarantine just in case. So we didn't really get out very much. And after that, we had about a week and a half to two weeks of getting to figure out the lay of the land before the MCO, the Movement Control Order, Malaysia's version of their lockdown, started. We've been here in pretty much perpetual lockdown for about 82 days. Hello, we are Laura and Carson, and we are Americans who live and work in Tokyo, Japan. We are currently located in Raleigh, North Carolina in America. We have been under some sort of stay-at-home order since mid to late March. Basically have been self-isolating since uh, the end of February, early March, so it's been a couple months now. We had come back to the United States to visit with congregations and family supporters of ours. And we've been back since October. Our original plan was to return to Tokyo in early March. And at that point, um, we were seeing the spread of COVID-19 affecting Asia still pretty um, heavily at that time. And so we made the decision to stay here in America and not risk the travel. But again, soon after it began to spread here and we had imposed stay at home orders and all of that. One of the things that we had to take into consideration was our daughter who was almost a year old at the time had a, a much needed surgery. And we had already planned on doing that in Tokyo, but we had to decide whether we were going to risk going back there at that time and risk the hospital situation there. Even though Japan has wonderful health care, we knew that it was going to be a different state, a different situation where she would have a much longer hospital stay and she would be in a common room with three other children whose parents would also be in and out of the room. So we were able to find a hospital here in North Carolina and a surgeon that was willing to take us on kind of at the last minute and said that we could do that surgery here with a one night stay private room. Felt like that was the safer option. In reality, that surgery was postponed twice. So it took us a lot longer to have the surgery than we actually had intended to. That had probably been the, the most difficult piece of parenting was trying to figure out for our daughter what was going to be the safer place and feeling like we were having to choose between 
our two countries in, in making that decision. I think in hindsight, it was a good decision. She was able to have her surgery about three weeks ago. We felt like we were able to do that very safely. By the time she had the surgery, there were protocols in place that would not have been there if she had had the surgery at you know on the original date. And so we're thankful for being between two places that both had good healthcare options, but that was probably the most stressful part, making the decision to stay in the in the U.S. One of the biggest challenges is unique to us by being away from our home. Um, so we are on lockdown, we are stuck in, in a home um, during this pandemic, but it is not our home. So we, we miss our beds, <laughs> we miss our things, and I think especially just with kids, it it's, adds that extra level of challenge of our daughter really misses her bunk bed and all of her toys. We are trying to do homeschooling with her for the first time ever, and it's it's a lot harder when you don't really have the types of supplies and materials and activities that we have at our house. So that's been interesting. We've made a lot of things out of toilet paper rolls and <laughs> cardboard boxes. So that's been a challenge and something I never thought I would have to do. And I think just so many unknowns during the pandemic is the the scariest and most stressful part of parenting you want to provide your kid with some security or sense of security and while we we talk a lot about how we're feeling and our emotions with her but we it's hard to provide a sense of security when we have gone through so many changes and so many unknowns and and we still can't really tell her when we will get to go home because we don't know that so that's probably been the most difficult part I think an unexpected joy has just been the time that we've been given as a family together. I'll be honest, our, our work situation actually isn't that much different, even though we're working remotely here from America. Just because of the nature of our work in Japan, working with one particular church, but really a, a whole collection of churches across the Tokyo area. And we end up working a lot at home. And so between our, our personal Japanese studies that we do, uh, as well as the time it takes to write messages and, and, and for various age groups and sermons, we end up working a lot from home. So our, our, we, we do see see each other a lot at home to begin with. We spend a lot of time with our with our daughter. She obviously has grown a lot since we were last in Tokyo before the pandemic started and even before that we were here in America for some work for a while. But uh, a unique joy has been that we've actually been able to spend time with Laura's parents quite a bit and so we've been quarantined together now for several months and so the joys of being able to, to see our daughter grow up with around at, you know, at least two of her grandparents every day and then I think also also a unique joy has been the the way that we've been on the same time zone to have phone conversations so we can FaceTime with, with our siblings, uh, our, our daughters, aunts and uncles, and, and my parents. And so nearly every day we're on a, a call with, with a family member, which would just be a whole lot harder with the time change between Tokyo and the East uh, east Coast of the United States. And so that has been it's been a really fun thing to know that there are certain times a day that we can pick up the phone and, and call and, and somebody in our family will pick up and uh, that we get to share time together even though we're not physically together as, as a family to spend a bunch of time with our kids that we normally wouldn't have our daughter in China is in a school a preschool so she's there most of the day she'll come home for a few hours and we get to hang out eat dinner but then it's time to go to bed whereas now uh, for better or for worse we get to see her every hour of every day um, most of the time it's for the better. So it's been really good getting to see her grow and change and getting to be a big part of that rather than kind of getting to see it from the sidelines, which sadly I think has become the norm, did become the norm in pre-pandemic life. I think it's been really good to hang out with our kids and get to be... Real parents. <laughs> be, pre be present. So. And I think especially with Finley, being such a young age when our daughter was this age uh, we have an eight month old he was four months when we came to malaysia so when our daughter was that age she was in a daycare getting to experience a lot more of this young age and the changes that happen so rapidly so that's been neat one of the things about when we do finally get to go back to our home in china we've wondered what we were going to do about her education in the future right now she is in a chinese preschool and she, she's in all Chinese. She's the only little blonde-headed, only 
Western child at the school and we love that. We want her to be a part of the culture we're in. We want her to learn the language. We want her friends to be Chinese. And so we've wondered what we're gonna do when she gets older and she's in elementary school and needs to have English as well. We, we didn't know if we were gonna have to move her to an international school. But this experience here has, I think, really given us the ability to know that when we do go back to China and when she gets a little bit older, we can put her in those Chinese schools and know that she can she can be in a Chinese school. We can still do some homeschooling for English while we're there. So that's been a really big encouraging thing that, I mean, I never thought I'd be able to do it. And now I know that I can uh, when I was forced to, <laughs> but just knowing that, you know, we, we can do that, that will be a really good thing for when we go back to China. I think one of the ways that I felt sad around this kind of new COVID era is around my daughter not being able to socialize in the way that we had originally hoped. She's now just over a year old, and so she is at that age where she certainly interested in other children and wants to play and have friends and I think when we had thought about coming back from America and and restarting in Tokyo this spring that was something we had already talked about was oh we can join these community play groups and we can go out to the park and meet families and the ways that we could begin to build community for her when we were in Tokyo and now we're in a place where it's not our permanent location so we not only we don't have the contacts for for building that community for her, but we also don't necessarily feel like it's very safe to do that. We're not really in a place where we we feel comfortable in going and playing at the neighbor's house or anything like that. Our concern for her is during this time in her life where she should be beginning those socialization skills and making friends that those opportunities are just not there because of safety and, and because of where we're located. I think one of the things we're concerned about is just how this is affecting my daughter's sense of security and sense of stability. It's not been just four months of instability for us. We we were in the States all last, the past six months before coming here because we had an unexpected medical situation come up. So we had to go back to the States last July. So now it's June. It's been almost a full year of very unexpected circumstances not being in our own home. So I think more worried about my older daughter just having a little bit of trauma from so many changes and so many unknowns and you know she hears the news about this virus so she calls it the sickness and when when we talk about why we can't go out and play with people you know she she talks about how oh because of the sickness it's just interesting and and wondering what is she going to remember about this time hoping that she remembers the fun day where we made lots of paper airplanes or the fun parts of it but wondering if she's going to kind of remember the the scary part but it has given us opportunities to have a lot of conversations that I don't know if we would have with her about, you know, the virus, but even about a lot of the things that are happening in the world right now. We have so much time to spend together and she probably sees more news than she normally would. So we have to be careful with that, but it does give us an opportunity to not just shy away from talking about the protests that are happening in the U.S. and the importance of having these conversations that while they're difficult and challenging to not Hopefully we're teaching her to not be paralyzed by the scary things, but to actually work through them, so. I think my desire, my hope for a post-pandemic world for, for our daughter and for, for all families really is that we don't have to think seven steps ahead about every decision that, that we make. It's There's so much information that continues to come out of every single nation about what they're experiencing with this pandemic and where everybody's just trying to adapt and make the best decisions they can with the information that they have and it just feels chaotic. And so the hope would be that there's a little less stress in in making some of the decisions daily that, that go along with our daily lives that this don't don't feel so like that they're that the whole world is is weighing on every single thing that we have to do and I think that we would all sleep a little better at night without having some of some of those daily stresses so that would be my hope for for our our daughter and for for the rest of the world's children in the days ahead I think my hope would also be that we don't waste 
the pandemic and the things that we've learned during it and after it. I hope that we become kinder and we become a little less busy and we become more prepared for this kind of thing. And so I hope for our daughter that those of us who are already adults can take this experience and try to use it for good in the days ahead. I mean, the, the biggest thing that I've wanted for her this whole time that isn't possible is just being able to socialize and play with other kids on a regular basis. We, we try to teach her as much as we can about diversity and about how good it is to get to know people who are different, get to experience other cultures. Here we are in, in a third country, not the US, not China, but in Malaysia, and we don't get to get out very often, you know? So I feel kind of sad about that, but at the same time, I'm excited that in the future, once things normalize, when they do, not if they do, some kind of normalcy, that we'll be able to look back on this and talk about this. And this be a time that she gets to, even though she's not directly experiencing it, to have it in her memory, in her story that we can go back to talk about. And then she will get to play with kids at some other point. And I hope that broadens her understanding of, of the kids uh, that she gets to play with. If they're different, she understands that. The world's a big place and, and she will have a head start on that, I think. I agree. I think just kids being able to play together again is definitely a hope mm -hmm. in the near future. Juniper played with some kids from across the hall for the first time last weekend and it, it was so nice but also so scary. <laughs> so to be able to let our kids just play without worrying about, oh, are the other kids going to get us sick? or even worrying about wiping down playground equipment. Um, so yeah, that's a big, a big hope for the near future is yeah. just play coming back. Mm -hmm. Two families, thousands of miles away from home, sheltered in a strange place and yet establishing normalcy for their small children in the midst of a global pandemic. Will our children remember the pandemic days of 2020? of being huddled inside and unable to play with friends or hug loved ones? Only time will tell. For now, we hold these families in our hearts and know that the story continues. We invite you to tune in next week as we hear about the realities of parenting in a pandemic while Black in America. Stay safe, stay well, and good night. <laughs>